Hi, I'm Pastor David Bugler from St. Paul Lutheran Church, Westlake, Ohio. And it's Wednesday, and we offer up a little devotion. Uh, we're going to offer a devotion today based upon a little two-chapter prophecy in the Old Testament. Haggai. Haggai, a prophet of God, as the people were coming back from Babylonian or Persian captivity, uh, 50,000 or so came back under Zerubbabel in the first wave after Cyrus, king of Persia, allowed them to go back and told them to build the t rebuild the temple, the temple that had been destroyed earlier by the Babylonians. So they're back uh, in Jerusalem, in Judea, and uh, God speaks to them through Haggai with a concern. In chapter 1, there's only two chapters, like I said, in chapter 1, he's concerned that uh, though they have been given instructions and though they have all the resources necessary, they're not, they're not rebuilding the temple. They're not rebuilding the house of God, which was the first thing they were supposed to do as the remnant came back to the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so God encourages them. He first of all says to them, this is a first commandment issue, I believe. Instead of rebuilding a house to honor me and the covenant that I've made with you, you're more interested in building your own houses. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the issue in our life, isn't it? Setting priorities and determining how it is that we best honor God and not honor ourselves. You know, the first sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden uh, is uh, described by some scholars as incurvatist esse in uh, Latin, which means they curved in on themselves. Instead of honoring the creator, they started to honor themselves, the creation, the temptation. You eat from that fruit and you'll become like God was just too great for them. You know, when we curve in our, on ourselves, when we when we think of our own needs, our own selfishness, our own pride, and kind of put God off to the side, that's a first commandment issue. You know, uh, you shall have no other gods above or before me, God says to us. And so Haggai, the prophet, that's the first message that he gives to the people. And a month later, he comes in chapter 2 with, with a second message, and it's a message of encouragement. It's a message in which he says, listen, God's going to be with you. And so take courage, be strong, and uh, and build. You know, he says, you know, some of you maybe remember what the old temple looked like that was destroyed by the Babylonians. And now you're looking at these stones, these ruins, and, and you're getting depressed. But, but Haggai says, really God says through Haggai, just wait. I'm going to bless you. And what you're going to do is going to be even greater. You know, Jesus said that to the disciples. He said to them after he did all kinds of wonderful miracles, healing miracles, uh, miracles over nature, you know, stilling the storm on the Sea of Galilee, even raising people from the dead. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, greater things than these do, will you do in my name. And so don't talk about, oh, you know, the Christian church or my life was better back in the good old days. These are the good old days. Today, Wednesday, is a good day to put God first, to honor God, and, uh, and, and to live your life to his glory. And, and, and that's really what uh, the last two prophecies from Haggai in chapter 2 uh, are really all about, too. Uh, you know, he even says to Zerubbabel, the governor, the leader, uh, you're going to put your signet ring, you know. Every king had a, had a ring that gave authority. Uh, and uh, Zerubbabel, you know, uh, is mentioned in both genealogies of Jesus. And really this whole promise of Haggai to the people was that in uh, 400 years, there's going to be Christmas bells ring in Bethlehem because the real king is going to be born. Uh, Jesus. And he has been born, and he's ready to jump into your day today and give you uh, grace and peace. As a matter of fact, that's the promise. At the end of chapter 2, uh, God says through Haggai, 
and I'm going to bring you peace. So work hard, be strong, uh, rebuild, not a temple, but rebuild my church, you know. Be in mission today, and I will bless you with peace. I pray that for all of you. God bless.